finish line in Cordoba is fast approaching, but the 40th Dakar Rally continues at a furious pace, with drivers and navigators doing their utmost to secure themselves a place on the podium. One man in the running is Bernard Tinbrunker, who captured another stage victory for the team alongside Michel Perrin in stage 11. Let's recap. In the stage which is very difficult and where the fight is still there, so it's not a win that you you get because all people are slowing down, so of course it's a good value. Bernard went uh, very well, won the stage, so well done to him, but uh, for sure, you know, uh, further starting further back is a big advantage. Very, very rough, you know, it was not easy, you know, but okay. We finish uh, today with uh, only two flat tyres and, uh, yeah, it was a really uh, hard stage. Yeah, it was uh, really amazing to, uh, to do this job today. No, it was really difficult because it was not an easy stage and uh, also for uh, Michel uh, it was really difficult to, to find the right uh, track and uh, we were only uh, the fourth car and uh, the tracks go left, right and uh, no, sometimes we make our own decision and our own lines. And we saw when we finished the first part of the stage that we nearly catch Genil or at least nine from the 12 minutes gap we had. So we knew we were on a good process and uh, in the second stage it was even better. So. Kimbala is always a difficult stage um, and uh, you know we were second on the road behind Pere Ansel. Uh, we tried to follow his tracks, you know, most places where we could, some places we lost it and then you have to uh, find a way and then open the road, so uh, not very easy. So on to stage 12, a 523 kilometre journey from Fiambala to San Juan. Once again, it turned out to be another excellent day for Toyota Kazoo Racing South Africa, with the team winning their fourth stage in 2018. Onasa and Mathieu Bermel made it a hat-trick of victories. Well, I mean, a big day actually. Uh, quite a lot happened in the stage that is not uh, totally transparent. Of course, the three Hiluxes ran really well. Bernard leading the way this morning. Janil had two punctures but was still right on the pace. And then fi finally Nasser uh, taking the win, which was uh, really great. Yeah, uh, we win today and uh, really we try to push and uh, you know, the Toyota Hilux uh, really a uh, strong car and uh, yeah, I am quite happy to to close the gap, you know, to the second place. And uh, yeah, still, still uh, two days left, and uh, we try to do our best uh, at least to to win, you know. Very good. Uh, to be honest, uh, for me, it was the first time to open the stage, uh, also together with Michelle, of course. Uh, it was quite difficult uh, to find uh, the way in the, in the weddies and uh, it was really it was really tough uh, the first stage but we managed it uh, well we finished uh, the first part uh, on p1 with two and a half minutes in front of uh, the number two and uh, no it uh, was quite well oh, we had a good stage uh, just a pity this morning we had two punctures um, you know just as we caught up to the guys and um, we had the first puncture and then uh, a couple of kilometers later we had another one, so you know that put us back a bit. And then the second half of the special, uh, I got caught in the dust of uh, the prey in a very bad place, so I was stuck in his dust for a while, they were obviously going uh, slower, he was just protecting Carlos, so lost a couple of minutes there. Um, but other than that, you know, good, um, would have been nice to have won the stage because I think without those uh, issues we could have easily won the stage. Four stage victories is, is great and you're absolutely right. We came here to win but uh, we're fighters, the whole team is still energised, ready to go. We'll, we're very happy with the four stage wins. We'd like it to be six. The guys are going to try and make it six, um, win the last two stages if we can. And um, yeah, the elusive first place is looking further and further away. Next, the penultimate stage of the 2018 Dakar Rally 13. Competitors will take on the dunes of San Juan, but will also have to cross an area of the dreaded fish fish in a 369 kilometer race to Cordoba. Tomorrow is, um, is largely a WRC gravel type stage, but it does start in some sand. So there's going to be some debate tonight still about how, um, how high we're going to run the car. Obviously, for the WRC, we want the car lower and we can stiffen it up slightly, change the setup. But until we've gone through all the road book with the co-drivers, we can't determine uh, how to set the car down tonight. Well, it's a 370 kilometer stage. I think it's pretty much the same type of stage as today. Uh, there's some sand in the beginning, uh, some, some soft, soft dunes. 
we need to cross for the first uh, 40 k's and uh, you know from there it's 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 pretty much uh, like today oh tomorrow the first stage is a typical sand stage where you need traction i don't think any navigation problem and the second one is in the wrc area so we change completely the character of the rally huh? tomorrow um, it's maybe a faster stage a little bit uh, sandy you know but uh, the last part will be uh, will be like uh, more uh, gravel and more uh, forest, yes, to, to Cordoba. As you have no doubt witnessed during the 2018 Dakar Rally, the Toyota Gazoo Racing South Africa Hilux can withstand severe punishment. The racing Hilux can tackle extremely rough obstacles at speeds that will make a standard bucky fall apart, let alone keep the driver's insides intact while it flies over rough terrain at very illegal speeds. The secret, suspension. There's various aspects to the suspension. Everybody you know, immediately jumps to the shock absorber or the damper as we call them because that absorbs the energy from the bump or hole in the road or step up or dune that the car's attacking. So the damper is connected to the uh, to car via suspension links, and those links have got a geometry that we call it attached to them. And that geometry puts different forces into the chassis and makes the shock absorber absorb the impacts in different ways. So you can't just come here and expect that you're going to put uh, change the shock absorber settings and the car is going to be perfect. You've got a spring on top of that as well, which keeps the platform, as we call it, of the car level. But all, in the end, the, probably the damper does 50% of everything. So this is the basic damper which we have on the car. This is the rod that moves in and out on the car. Um, obviously in the bump, that is rebound, as it moves out. Inside the damper, this is what it would basically look like. The shim stacks I was talking to about earlier sits on that side of the piston and on the opposite side of the piston. As it moves in, the bottom side of the shims regulates the speed of what it travels through or moves in. And obviously on the way out, the top half of the stack works. And that regulates how much oil you're allowing to flow through the piston at various speeds. Well, I mean, especially with a new car like this, uh, with the dampers or with the shock absorbers, um, it's quite crucial to find the sweet spot, you know, and it's, it's, more, it's, it's more difficult than it, than it sounds. Uh, there's a lot of variables, uh, especially with this car with a new geometry, but at the end of the day, you find something that is a compromise and that works well in, in all conditions. Uh, you do have a setting on the damper which you can put a couple of clicks on here and there to, to improve it, but basically you've got to uh, make sure that the, the valving um, is right inside the damper and that you've got the right feeling as a driver. I think Janil as a development driver is, is really good. He's calm, he's not emotional, he's analytical, he's mechanical as well, so he understands how the damper works. Now as a driver myself, this can be very dangerous because you can start thinking too much about the mechanicals and not enough about the, the driving. But because he's interested in it, he's interested in the detail and the devil is in the detail, and that will allow him to do probably more runs with very small changes than a driver who's not interested in it and said, well, you know, perhaps this lot are wasting their time. Whereas Janil will say, okay, let's go down there. It didn't work, no problem, we'll go back to there. Well, you know, it, the, the feeling of, 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 of the, the, the damper settings comes back to, uh, you know, time in the seat. The more time you spend in the seat, the more you get used to the car and the, the, the better you are at feeling uh, small changes. And, and at the end of the day, the small changes can make, um, you know, the difference. So uh, the more time you spend in the seat, the better feeling you have. Janil is extremely, extremely good at this. One shim change, he'll tell you immediately yes or no.